you enjoy most from this experience which was yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, it, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, it was it was very very demanding. Um, I, I think one of my my favorite uh, moments was was some of the nights. Um, we, we shot for about one week on, on location in New England, and then we shot about three weeks in Los Angeles. Um, but some of the nights after shooting, uh, we would shoot, you know, all, all day. Sometimes we'd shoot, you know, there were a couple nights we'd shoot till you know two or three in the morning. Um, but after we were done shooting with the actors and the crew there, and we'd go back and everyone's dead tired and, and, and have a beer and, and laugh and because we're all so, so so beyond exhausted but there's that sort of fun place where you're so tired you just don't care anymore and and I, yeah I think back uh, to some of those nights very very fondly um, uh, it was also you know um, the, the first time we were able to uh, we, we didn't really play back the footage until after we, you know, weeks after it was shot and we were back in Los Angeles and the first time of seeing the footage of some of the scenes that came out really good, that first moment when you're seeing, oh, this, this might work. Uh, it was, it was a, a uh, shot uh, the whisper in actual locations of the locker cell. Yeah, where, where he actually wrote the story. The story, story begins, he describes the flooding in the, the West River um, outside of uh, Townsend and we shot literally standing in the West River uh, right right where uh, the story took place and in the little the little New England towns uh, you know are, are still there and still you know pretty old-fashioned that Vermont is uh, it's pretty rural um, uh, where the story took place but it was neat to be you know in in his part of the world and see the mountains you know that that frightened him uh, so, because he was such a, a city fellow, um, but we were, uh, yeah, we were out in the wild. You chose uh, Greece for your first training uh, worldwide? Yeah, we, um, we submitted it to yeah, we sub yeah, we submitted it to some, some different festivals, um, and we, you know, we, once we knew it was going to be done this spring, um, you know, we looked at the different, you know, opportunities and, and, you know, our thinking was we could, we could try and hold out for a big festival in a bigger country, you know, and see what happened. We had hoped that we might get it into Sundance, although as it was, it wouldn't have been done in time for Sundance, so, uh, but we didn't get into Sundance. Um, and so when, uh, you know, when SFF rated, you know, said, hey, we, we love your movie and we'd like to show it, you know, we thought about it and went, you know, why not? You know, um, when we did Call of Cthulhu, we went to a lot of festivals all over, all over the world, and the biggest ones were often not the best ones, at least, at least for the filmmakers. Um, it, you know, it really varied, and the, the best ones were the ones where the, the festival was really excited to show this movie. And some of the big festivals were excited to show it, and some of the little festivals were excited, and so it was like... Once we, 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 you know, talking to Alecos, he was like, you know, got the movie and was into it, and he was like, you know, the audiences here really like the Call of Cthulhu, and so we're like, yeah, all right. Yeah, basically we'll you're the main attraction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and that's, you know, we looked at, at, like, Berlin, and, you know, yeah, it would be cool to be at the Berlin Film Festival, but it's also, you know, we would be the <laughs> movie at the Berlin Film Festival, you know, and we have no movie stars, and we have no beautiful girls in expensive gowns, and we, you know, we, we can't afford expensive publicists and PR people, and, you know, we're just a couple guys in a, in a, in a concrete box in Los Angeles making movies, and, and so, you know, we can come here and actually, you know, meet people and, and talk to them, and, and this is, the, the, this club, you know, has shown a lot of enthusiasm for what we're we're doing, and so we went. Okay, well, let's, you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be done in time to have it ready to screen in Athens, and 
you know, they want to see it, so what's going to happen to them? So, yeah, here we go. So, I get I get email this whole week from uh, everybody in Los Angeles going, how's it going in Greece? What's the, did they like it? You know, I'm like, they haven't seen it yet, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, everybody's excited, and, you know, we've worked so long, you know, it took, you know, more than four years. Five years ago to, to make it, that to be able to show it to, to people who weren't involved in making it is is a great pleasure for us, you know. And it's new to us because we're not, you know, called Cthulhu. We, you know, we've we've shown it many, 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 many times, and we're used to seeing it with audiences. It's fun, but but it's not the same thing. Whisper, it's like, you know, um, it's it's new for us. So. We wish you the best tonight. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad, I'm glad you're coming. Yeah, when when we. When we first talked about um, making the Call of Cthulhu, we sort of struck a deal, and he was like, um, "Okay, well, I, I want to direct it," and I was like, "Okay, well, I'll write it, and you can direct it, and then the next movie we make, I'll direct it." And um, you know, we know, we never really talked about writing the second movie because we didn't know what it was, but he was going to direct the first one, and I would direct the second one. And so it was so, pre-decided. Yeah, it was pre-decided. Yep, before uh, before we even started uh, working on it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I spent I spent the better part of a year trying to write my adaptation of Whisper because one one of the things is you know Whisper is not a very long story, um, and and dramatically it's not a very satisfying story. I I don't find um, it just sort of screeches to a stop, um, and I think if you did a movie that that stopped like that, everyone would be like. Where's the rest of it? You know, um, so we knew we needed to make some changes to make it a good movie, um, and so I spent, uh, you know, the better part of a year writing a script, um, and finally got it done, and, and you know, gave it over to Andrew, and he he did he did uh, the script that I wrote, and it made him very upset. So. Uh, so he's like, oh, all right, I'm going to go write a good script, you know, and throw, threw mine away. So, uh, and he went and spent, it took him the better part of a year to write his script. And he gave it to me, and I'm like, oh, we, can't, we can't do this. No. Uh, so then I was like, okay, well, we can't, we can't keep spending a year going, going back and forth. So the, the third year, we sat down together and, and really discussed. And one of the things I like is there's, Elements from both both my script and his script that are in the final script, and it's like, well, well, let's keep this character, and but let's have him do this from your thing, and then it's like this happens and this happens, and then let's well, let's bring that guy back from this one, and let's let's do that scene from over in this one, and so we, it took us about a year still, but at least working together, we eventually came to a script that that finally, on the last day, we went, okay, I like it. You like it. We're good. So let's make a movie out of it. But but it was a it was a difficult process because we, we we both changed the story in sort of different ways um, and and we had to you know and for people who know us he and he and I are, are pretty different types of guys um, which is I think part of why what makes our, our partnership a good one um, but. Um, but sometimes when, when you have very different, you know, points of view, particularly on something artistic, you know, it, it, it's a, a challenge to try and, and, and bring those together in a way that's that's satisfying. But I think in the end, you know, uh, I, I was very happy with the shooting script, and I think he was quite happy with the shooting script, and, you know, something we both uh, came to. There's probably there's two, I think, that are, that are my favorite. Um, I think at the Mountains of Madness, it's just it's just great, it's, and it's very it's very typical of him. It's very Lovecraftian, um, but it's you know it's dramatic, it's exciting, it's interesting. It's just it's a there's a lot to like about that story. Um, and I also I, I I really like the Rats in the Walls, um, and I like that one because it was the first one I ever read. My weird friend gave me a book and says, "Here, you have to read this," and I read it. And I was like, "Wow, that's really weird." Um, and and uh, yeah, it's just again, it's a very, it's a very strange and unsettling story, and, and I, I liked it quite a lot. So, yeah. The short list is um, uh, the thing on the doorstep and uh, the shadow of time. The 
Is that good? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we are the Lovecraft guys. You know, we, we know the material. We've been working, adapting it in different ways, you know, our whole adult lives. Um, we've been very successful with it. Um, you know, I think we've displayed, we have a, a sensitivity to the source material, but also an aptitude to, to make the, whether it's it's a, the radio plays or the movies, something that, that's compelling and exciting and dramatic, even probably more exciting and dramatic than the stories themselves are, but in a way that it doesn't feel like, a, a, you know, we've made it something that's no longer Lovecraft. So, we, you know, I think we've found how to balance those two worlds and, and uh, by sort of, you know, we don't, at this point, you know, we're not hiring, you know, Tom Cruise or or uh, Cameron Diaz to be in, in our, our movies, but we have H.P. Lovecraft is sort of our star. He's he's a you know a star author and um, you know he's a, a famous writer. People are interested in his work, and and so you know for now until we're famous enough ourselves that we can do whatever we want. And I don't know if anybody ever really gets that famous as you know poor poor Guillermo del Toro's you know Lovecraft product just just got shot down, um, you know. But uh, but for now you know it seems to be working pretty well. So. full of evidence in support of the idea that there are worlds beyond our own and people, creatures that have come here from somewhere else. So you believe these creatures are alien beings of some kind? The Penacook Indians described similar things, did they not, Professor Wilmarth, ages ago? They said that the beings were not native to this earth, that they had flown here from the stars, creatures in league with Satan, only too happy to lead mankind down the path to sin. The whole matter began with the unprecedented Vermont floods of 1927. The rain poured down for days. It washed all kinds of things into the rivers. The people reported seeing strange things floating in the water. For centuries, there have been reports of monstrous beings in the hills of Vermont. You can't really see the footprints on this one, but the creatures dance around those stones. We see the footprints. They're real and they're all around our farm. I I've seen them flying at night and I've heard them talking. Wild country, eh, Mr. Wilmar? I think you'll find time runs differently here. There are, are people, a sort of cult that work in collusion with the creatures. We don't get many visitors around here. What's your business? Mr. Wilmoth, pardon my not rising, but I've been taken ill. My father needs your help. Do you realize the stupendous nature of what lies before us? <laughs> this is madness. No, it's true. I am the opener of the gate, and you will not dictate to me! You can't believe them. It's just what they want us to think. Don't you see? There's nothing we can do. There are things that cannot be stopped. Can you hear me? It's me. It's Albert. We're back to the middle. Ready? Are you out of your mind? All right, Henry. What is it they want? Shall I tell you? Are you ready? Come closer. Let me whisper it to you. They're not unwilling to share their great secrets with mankind. Secrets of the universe itself. They're coming. We're doomed. We're all doomed.